Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. I do have one quick favor before we get to the video that you came here for, and that is very simply this. You see that little red subscribe button below this video? Go ahead, smash that subscribe button. It really does help me. It really does help this channel grow and my audience grow. So go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. And now, here is the video that you came here for. Let's get to a much looser topic now that we are past Keontae Johnson. And that is, of course, what is going on uh, at Auburn University down on the Plains. And, you know, one of the things that I, I do love about doing this show is that I get to react to stuff, uh, you know, in real time, right? And, and there are obviously days where something happens on Saturday in a big game and I don't talk about it until Monday or anything like that. But then there are other times, like on Sunday, where I'm getting ready to do the show, I got Red Zone on in the background, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Gus Mail's on fire, right? And so what's great about this show is I get to put on the recorder, pop on the recorder, whatever you want to say, and I just get to start talking about it. And I start to, I get to be one of the first people to talk about it and put out my opinion and share what I think. And part of the responsibility that comes with this job is that you try to get every prediction, every uh, um, story, every topic right, right? I give out an opinion. I hope I'm 100% right. Uh, and that's really how I would describe what I do is a, a piece of information is presented to me, I figure out what the facts are, and then I base my opinions on facts, and you hope they're right. And a lot of times I'm right, a lot of times I look smart, a lot of times I know what I'm talking about. And then there's a story like Auburn, Gus Malzahn fired, where I was 100% wrong. And I'm not ashamed to admit I was 100% wrong, but I just whiffed on this one. Because if you listen to Monday's episode, uh, what I said was is that I believed at that time that Auburn would not have fired Gus Malzahn and been willing to pay him $21 million uh, in, in buyout money, $10 million of which is owed within 30 days, that they would not have done that if they did not already have the next guy lined up to take the head coaching job. And like on the very surface level, one, I certainly wasn't the only person that covers college football or talks about college football or writes about college football that said it. I think everybody was kind of in agreement. You don't fire a guy and pay him $21 million coming off a 6-4 and four season in a global pandemic when money is tight unless you know, you know exactly who the next guy is. And I thought it was Hugh Freeze, the Liberty coach, formerly Ole Miss. But as the days have gone on, it's become increasingly clearer that Auburn did not have a plan and does not have a plan in place and is just going to kind of be ad-libbing it and throwing stuff against the wall and see what would stick. Uh, and we, we, we've, we've found that out through a couple different things. First of all, on Tuesday, Auburn announced that they had hired a search firm. And for people who don't really know what a search firm does, their job is to basically research candidates, vet candidates, uh, any background stuff, right? So I'm just going to use a hypothetical. I'm not being critical of this guy. But if Steve Sarkeesian, the Alabama offensive coordinator, is a head coach, he, of course, had substance abuse issues in his past, the search firm's job is to say, is this in the past? Could it resurface? Has it been an issue since he got to Alabama? Their job is to basically do homework so that the school gets the hire right. Um, so first of all, this, the fact that you're hiring a search firm means that one, not only did you not have a plan in place, but two, you're not in a particular rush to hire a head coach. And so as it become has become increasingly clear that they are not in a rush to hire a head coach, a funny thing has happened. Um, a lot of different names have come across the plate in terms of who could be potentially be the Auburn, the next Auburn head coach. A couple of them are guys that I've already mentioned, Hugh Freeze, uh, Steve Sarkeesian, the Alabama offensive coordinator, who obviously um, was the former head coach at USC, former head coach at Washington, has experience running a high-powered program. Uh, USC, one of the biggest brands in college football, so Steve Sarkeesian's an option. Uh, Mario Cristobal, I told you on Sunday he wasn't going to come. He was just looking to leverage Auburn for a new contract. It appears as though he's gotten it, so his name is out of that candidacy. Uh, and there's a lot of other names popping up. I would add, if you want proof that nobody really knows what the heck is going on at Auburn, one of the names that has popped up is Kevin Steele. Now, you might be asking yourself, who the heck is Kevin Steele? Well, he was the Auburn defensive coordinator under Gus Malzahn, and there are now reports that Kevin Steele, Gus Malzahn's defensive coordinator, has some very powerful boosters in his corner trying to get him the job. And you're probably sitting there thinking, well, wait a second now. He was just on the staff that got fired. The fans weren't happy with that staff. Why would they hire him? And what I would say is I think that speaks to what 
This coaching search is for Auburn, which is so far a total mess with no real plan. Now, I will say in Kevin Steele's defense, um, you know, he's a very successful defensive coordinator, was spent some time at prior to Auburn at Clemson when Clemson really got things rolling under Dabo Sweeney, spent some time at Alabama in various roles under Nick Saban. So he does have a track record as a successful defensive coordinator. He was also head coach for five years, four years, excuse me, at Baylor, where he went 9-31 and 31 in four years. So he does have head coaching experience, and it didn't go well. 9-36, and 36, excuse me. How dare I? 9-36. and 36. And how about this? 1-31 uh, and 31 in the Big 12. And I'll say in his defense, Baylor was a much worse job when he had it. But yeah, that's not very good. Uh, and as you can imagine, a lot of Auburn fans are not happy with the decision. And they're not happy because, again, what I just said, not a successful head coach in his previous stop. And oh, by the way, um, just worked on the staff that you were itching to get rid of for years. And so the Auburn fan base is up in arms. Uh, and just for fun, I, I did go to an Auburn message board just to see kind of what was going on and what the reaction was. And so I've decided, um, <laughs> I decided for fun, we'll do a very brief reading of an Auburn message board, and then we'll talk about the rest of this, and we'll get out of here, get to Michigan. But first of all, first post I see on the Auburn message board, and this is Auburn Undercover, inside the Auburn Tigers. It's part of the 24-7 Sports Network. Uh, Kevin Steele will be announced at 3 p.m. this after. And I assume this after means this afternoon. Well, first of all, I'm reading this at about, 5 p.m., 6 p.m. Central Time. Kevin Steele, to my knowledge, has not been named head coach, so this post isn't very good. But first, uh, a couple of different of the reactions. Uh, one says, man, I hope your source is wrong. Beyond that, I'm just scrolling through right now. LOL, no way, or we really are a clown show. Somebody said, yeah, we'd better bump his salary big time, or he will casually select one of the many other job offers being laid at his feet. We are absolutely unreal. And then this one's one of my favorites. Uh, if Kevin Steele is announced as anything other than the interim for a bowl game we might not even play in, then we might as well just tell Gus it was an April Fool's joke and bring him back. Kevin Steele would be a PR da disaster and likely a coaching one too. And so if you listen to that, it's pretty clear that the fan base is not only divided, but that there would be revolt in the streets if Kevin Steele was actually named the head coach at Auburn. And I would add, <laughs> there are some incredible threads on this message board. So I'm on this message board right now. First one says, make Lincoln Riley say no to a $2 million a year pay raise. Call me crazy. I don't think Lincoln Riley is leaving the Big 12 where he runs complete reign at a better job at Oklahoma, even for a $2 million pay raise at Auburn. Um, there are a couple other ones. Somebody asked about Steve Sarkeesian. Somebody asked about Hugh Freeze. Somebody asked about P.J. Fleck at Minnesota. And then we get to the gem of them all. Somebody wants to know, what about Bobby Petrino? And if you, if you don't remember all your P's and Q's, Bobby Petrino was, of course, many years ago, the head coach at Louisville, and very publicly tried to angle to get the Auburn job even when Tommy Tuberville still had the job, he wasn't able to get it. He eventually went to the NFL, back to Arkansas. It falls apart, goes back to Louisville. And not sure if you remember, he did coach college football three seasons ago, went 2-10, and ten, but one Auburn fan does believe that he is the answer. And by the way, I went on the message board just to read what people said. And this is what I came up with as a reason to hire Bobby Petrino. This is just some solid message board gold right here. This is an Auburn fan arguing that they should hire Bobby Petrino. Not sure, but Bridgewater and Lamar Jackson tell me he can probably do okay. If Michael Vick hadn't gone to prison, Petrino would have been 10 years ahead of the league. Auburn wanted him once and blew up his gig at Louisville. Need to consummate this marriage. The dude is a savant. A jerk? Yeah, but an offensive savant. All that stuff about how he hurt players' feelings in Atlanta, and it is spelled feelings at Atlanta by leaving them on a goodbye note. Sissy crap. No wonder Atlanta always loses. They hired him to use Vic. It blew up. He left. Girlfriend in Arkansas? Really? Big time football plays through COVID, but is dumping coaches who have girlfriends? Please. So that was a real 
That was a real post on an Auburn message board. You cannot make this stuff up. That was maybe the single greatest post in the history of message boards arguing for Bobby Petrino, who went 2-10 at Louisville a few years ago, and the main points of his argument were these. If Michael Vick hadn't gone to jail, he would have been a stud in the NFL. First of all, I don't think the going to jail thing, like that's your best argument. Then, on top of that, he's an offensive savant, not really true. Lamar Jackson kind of saved his bacon there the last few years. Uh, don't think he's been considered an offensive savant for years. But then on top of that, the biggest argument is he had a girlfriend? Who cares? We just played through COVID. Why does anyone care? Let's just go hire Bobby Petrino. So that is the theme out of Auburn right now. And it, again, it just speaks to the fact that it is very clear that there was never a plan in place to fire when they fired Gus Malzahn other than to pay him a bunch of money to not be the head coach. I will say one last thing before we get to Michigan and we get out of here. Uh, it, it did make me think of something, and I'm actually going to talk to Nick Coffey about it here in about 15, 20 minutes, but what I was thinking was this. So we all kind of know that there was this narrative over the last six months that you couldn't fire somebody during a pandemic, right? There was this idea that we're living in this era of slash budgets and, 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 and actual employees are getting fired and sports are getting cut. We just can't pay the 10, 12, 15, $20 million to buy out a head football coach. And I think that's fair. I think it was fair. I think it's clearly been proven wrong. And it got me thinking. I think that, the, and Nick Coffey and I do talk about this. I think there was this thought that this COVID-19 stuff would allow us to kind of reset college sports. And we don't need to spend this much money on a juice bar and that much money on travel. And do we really need to stay in a five-star hotel or can we stay in a three-star hotel? And can we, instead of staying in a hotel the night before a home game, maybe kids can just sleep in their dorms. And we thought all of this stuff would happen. And what I think it's done is it's actually done the exact opposite. What it's done is... It's allowed the truly powerful boosters with the truly uh, uh, limitless checkbooks to kind of get even more power than they ever had, right? Because if you look at what is going on in college sports right now, it is so clear that the boosters now have ceded even more control than they ever have. And I think most of you are college sports fans, so you kind of understand. A lot of times when a coach gets fired, it's not that the AD wants to fire them. It's not that the school president wants to fire them. It's that the biggest boosters say, that guy, that girl, if it's a female sport, that girl, that guy has to go, right? I don't care who it is, but that guy has to go. And since they're the ones signing the big checks to get that guy or girl out of there, they oftentimes have more of a say and who the next person is. I think what has happened in this COVID era, budgets are tighter. Marketing, bud, you know, marketing dollars coming in are fewer and far between as businesses that would normally donate to the school aren't doing it at that clip. And so the people that do have money all of a sudden, I think actually have more say than they ever have. And it goes back to really, if you want to go back, you can go back to May when Danny Manning was fired at Wake Forest. For people who don't remember, Danny Manning was really the first big-time coach that was fired in this COVID era. He was the Wake Forest basketball coach, and he was paid something crazy, 13, 14, 15 million to go away. And the understanding at the time was basically, and, and I think the AD, John Curry, Tennessee fans remember him, um, he even said, like, no, no money was taken from the university, no money was taken from the athletic department. This was all paid from private funding, and the thought was at the time, it was really one or two boosters who basically paid all of Danny Manning's buyout. Fast forward to a few weeks ago, Will Muschamp is fired. Shane Beamer is eventually hired, and the rumor at South Carolina, and nobody could really confirm it, but I heard it from more than one person, so I kind of tend to think that it's true, is that there's the possibility that really South Carolina, that Will Muschamp's buyout was paid by one person, and that that one person really did have kind of a big say in who the next coach was. And that this one person wanted Shane Beamer, and so because this guy or girl paid the buyout, they had say on who the next coach was. Don't know if it's true, but it has been a rampant rumor. People in South Carolina have told me this, and so it is worth considering. And I think to bring it full circle with Auburn, this Kevin Steele stuff is coming from one or two very powerful boosters who probably spend a crap ton of their money to get Gus Malzahn out, 
And now they have a ton of say in who the next head coach will be, potentially this Kevin Steele guy, potentially somebody else. But what it's made me realize, I think it's just so fascinating, is that I think that we thought that it would kind of reset how college athletics worked. I think it's the exact opposite. I think the people that had a lot of power before have even more power now because of the fact that there's less money, the money is more consolidated to a fewer amount of people, and maybe it ends up in a situation like what happened in South Carolina with Shane Beamer, and of course, um, you know, what potentially could happen at Auburn, where if Kevin Steele gets the job, there is no doubt that he is not the best candidate, um, that he would have very powerful people in his corner, so it's fascinating to think about. But we'll follow the Auburn stuff, uh, and we'll talk more about it as they eventually do. They will hire a coach, and, and it might be somebody interesting like Steve Sarkeesian or Hugh Freeze. might be somebody less interesting like Kevin Steele. Uh, but as I said in my dramatic reading of the Auburn message boards, if you follow this stuff, it is uh, very clear that um, it's a very, very, very 